Hey everybody, this is Nick with Frost CNC, and we're going to do a quick walkthrough of our Torsion Box Workbench, uh, and this is available on FrostCNC.com, so go check it out. Um, so what we can see here is a Torsion Box style workbench, and we've got a number of parameters uh, that are programmed in uh, to allow you to customize uh, the workbench however you'd like to. And so what we'll start with here is, of course, we can change the width, the height, and the depth of uh, the product, just like you would any other cabinet uh, product in Mosaic. And so I'll go ahead and do that now. Let's say we wanted a six-foot uh, workbench, and we also wanted that to be, let's say, 36 deep. And you can see uh, our workbench shrinks down to those dimensions. And everything seems to line up and to, to fit. Uh, but you can see our openings here have shrunk down to be pretty small. And so we've got a parameter here that allows us to control the number of openings uh, in both the width of the bench and the depth of the bench. So along the width here, you can see there are six openings. Uh, on a six-foot workbench, let's say we want uh, four. And you can see the spacing automatically updates, the interior structure updates, uh, and everything uh, continues to line up. And along the depth of the bench here, we're gonna go from three to two openings. There we go. And you can see we've got really any number from one to three along the depth and any number from one to six along the width uh, in openings. If I remove the top, Go to layers and tops. You can see uh, we've got kind of this skeleton-like structure in here. And these uh, interior components are all joined with half lap joints. So I'm gonna blow this up a little. And you'll kind of be able to see we've got this half lap style joinery uh, connecting them together. Uh, and so again, any number from one uh, through three along depth and one through six along width all of the interior components uh, follow suit uh, with uh, this joinery. So we'll go ahead and put that back. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put the top back on. And the next thing I wanna look at here is rail and style width. And so we have control here of the thickness of the rail component here. So if you wanted, let's say a little stouter bench we can go to three inches there and you'll see we went to three inches, go back to two. Uh, we can do the same thing here with the style, both here and also at the ends. Uh, we can go to extreme to show. We can make a much stouter look, whatever you'd like. We've got some dado control here. Uh, we've got a dado of the uh, end into the side. And we've got it set at a quarter inch right here, and you can see that there. If you wanted that to be a butt joint and set our data to zero, so be it. Um, if we wanted that to be thicker or a deeper data, excuse me, uh, we can go ahead and do that um, as well. So we'll leave that as a half inch there. And we can also do that on the interior components. I'll go ahead and get rid of the tops again. And we can see we've got a quarter inch data there. And we have full control over that dado of your interior components uh, as well. And we'll leave that as a half inch moving forward. Uh, and then I've got some slot parameters built in uh, to those dados as well. And those are separate from the slot parameters that are already in your uh, mosaic construction method. Uh, so you can control how your parts fit. Uh, the next one asks for the diameter of the cutout tool, most likely a 3 8 compression, maybe a half inch compression tool. And if I put the top back on, you can see why. Uh, it really does two things. Uh, one, it actually makes uh, the cutout be the correct size. And two, uh, it controls our little dog bone shape here uh, to get you a tight fit in the corner. So if I go ahead and go to one inch, you can see it controls the, the dog bone so that your parts fit together uh, nice and snug. We'll go back to 3 ace there. 
we've got control here of the diameter of the holes in the top. So if you have a certain clamping system or a certain uh, bit you would like to use for the holes in the top, uh, that's where we could change that. The next thing, if we want to hide all fasteners, I've got these pre-done pilot holes here for you. If you would like to make your own uh, and you don't want that, we can go ahead. You can see zero being no and one equaling yes. So if I go to one, we can hide all of the fasteners uh, really in the entire model. We'll turn those back on. The next parameter is the distance from the edge. Really anywhere we've got a, a screw coming up to the end uh, of a part, we can control how far in that hole gets placed uh, so that we don't split uh, plywood or whatever we're making this out of. And so again, we'll go to an extreme. Probably two inches is a little far from the end. But again, you can dial it in however you'd like. The next thing we've got is to remove the center fastener hole. You can see we've got a third hole here in the center of all of these joints. Suppose, I'm gonna go over to the size tab here. Suppose you wanted a shrunken down bench, we'll go to six inches. At six inches high, there's really no need for three screw holes there. And so I wanted you to have some control to be able to remove all of those pretty easily uh, to accommodate uh, shorter benches. And you can see the center hole gets removed on all of the joints uh, around the workbench. We'll undo that. I'll go back here, that. Okay. Carry on. You can see here we've got the uh, fastener hole diameter. All of these holes for putting the bench together are currently set up for five millimeter. If you've got a three millimeter brad bit, go ahead and control the size of your pilot holes. The next spot, we've got corner width to capture the top and the bottom. So you can see how we've got this corner area that captures the top and we've got one on the bottom. And we actually have full control over how big those capture uh, kind of wings are. Right now they're set at four. We'll make them extreme, extremely big. You can see we have full control over how big those wings are. And then ultimately we can sh shrink them down uh, to be pretty minor. Uh, you can see there is a minimum here. Uh, this gets a little funky if these cutouts overlap. And you can see I put a minimum of an inch and a half there for you. The next part is the distance in from the top edge where your hole pattern starts. So from the center of this hole to the edge is currently set at three inches. If you wanted those holes to be closer to the edge, you have full control where your spacing starts. Uh, the next is the number of holes along the width or the long way here of the top. So I've got it set to a max of 23 and a max of 11 along the depth direction. Now, I shrunk this down to six feet and it started at eight. And so 23 is gonna be probably too many. And so what we can do here is I'm gonna change the view to the top view. And you can see I've already got some dimensions here from doing this prior. And so we'll go ahead and do this down here. I'm gonna go ahead and position my dimension and I'm gonna figure out what my spacing is here. All right, I would probably like that to be four inches. And so I could do the math otherwise. I could just check here. I'm gonna go from 23 holes down to 17. And you can see all of the holes shifted this direction. So that ended up being at roughly four and a quarter. And that's fine. And we can do the same in the other direction. We'll go down to eight, probably a little far, but we'll stick with that for now. The last set that we've got is 
we've got fasteners down the edge here and fasteners on our partition piece right here uh, to screw the top and the bottom in. And you can see the bottom has them as well. And we can control how many there are, including removing them all together uh, by going to a quantity of zero. If I go to zero, you can see all of the fasteners along the width here have gone away. Fasteners along the depth are still there set at five. So again, I can get rid of those as well. And now there are no fasteners in the top uh, and you can, you can secure it however you'd like. That is the walkthrough of our torsion box workbench. And like I said, you can get this at frostcnc.com and go ahead and uh, modify it as you wish, nest your parts and, and make a workbench.